pay attention to the definitions of things and make sure that they are clear. A definition must be universal, also called adequate, with everything that is included under that definition. In other words, don't change your definition halfway through or twist it to mean what you want it to mean. You have to be consistent with a definition. It must be universal, in other words, apply all the time. A definition should be clear and plain because it should lead us into an idea of what is being defined and talked about. We want our readers and our listeners to have a clear and plain idea of what we're trying to convey to them. The definition should be short, not overflowing with extra words. We should be concise. On the other hand, it is better that a definition should have more words if it helps to properly explain the subject, rather than leaving obscurities in the sentence by confining it down too much. As we properly define things, there are several observations that we should follow. Number one, we should not limit or confine a definition to mean only one single attribute or property in order to show a difference. Sometimes the essential difference actually consists of more than just one idea. Sometimes it consists of two or three ideas or attributes. For example, the word grocer means one who buys and sells particular things. But it is not limited to those who only sell certain things. Another example would be clocks. could be defined as an engine with weights and wheels that indicates time. But that is not limited to clocks, because clocks can also be mechanical devices without moving parts, but also indicate time, such as a sundial. Another observation is that definitions do not always have to be positive, because some things are defined by the defect or the lack of what others have. For example, a stool is a seat without a back. Sin is a lack of conformity to the law of God. Blindness is a lack of sight. Another observation is that some things may have two or more definitions and each of them can be just as good. For example, for the word eternal, one definition could be that which ever was and ever shall be. But you could also define it as that which has no beginning and shall have no end. Both of them are good. And another observation is sometimes there are going to be words that we define, but the essence of it is so close to that of another that it makes the definition more difficult. For example, a bat has the essences of birds, but also the essence of a beast, so it's a little harder to define exactly what is it. Also with a barge, a barge has essence of a boat, but it also has the essences of a ship. There will be certain terms whose essence is close to that of another and will make it a little more difficult to define. A description is a mere collection of the most remarkable parts or properties. It is also called an imperfect description. It is the most obvious parts or properties that stick out to us. That is a description. A definition is called perfect when part of that definition includes what the essential difference is. 